Good morning. Today is ketchup day. It's not ketchup. I didn't really have ketchup, so it's just red. Basically, since coming here, I, I was trying to take some time off. I think I've been uploading a lot. Um, so I haven't really been, I've been taking sporadic like half days off. I don't think I've taken a whole day off just with the intent of taking it off. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna do today. So today really have nothing planned. I don't have any film session planned. I don't have any places I really wanna go. This is what I eat when I'm not filming in South Korea. Right now it's about 8.30 a.m. It's breakfast time. Um, I think there's a buffet downstairs. Let's go check it out. I usually hate breakfast buffet hotels because usually all you get is some bacon and eggs, sausage. You might as well go to local Denny's, but in Asia, breakfast buffets at hotels are awesome. Croissants are freshly baked, nice and flaky. And then it's really the extra items like a skewer of fish cake or some kimchi and some stir fried potatoes and grilled piece of fish or pickled garlic and whatever this is. This is fitting because it's almost Christmas. I like to unwrap stuff. Oh, sweet sticky rice wrapped in a lotus leaf. I love this. They made pho and not bad pho either. Oh, this broth is really nice. I love it when they incorporate local street foods and hotel buffets. Fish cake. Mm. Tastes just like on the streets. Pancakes. I finished all my magic spoon. And I'm too weak to walk past cereal without having some. Oh, wow. I eat French toast like once a year. Stuff is so bad for you, but it's so good. I'm going to gym right after this. This Danish is tremendous. It was a really good buffet. Going to the gym to burn off that cereal and the Danish. Why did I eat that Danish? Oh, now I got to work out extra hard. One hour extra today, just for the Danish. I start off with about 90 pounds on each side. And then I slowly go up to about 110 pounds on each side. In a total, I max about 320. So this is a pretty safe way for me. And I can do more reps because of this machine. And I'd be able to push yourself a little bit, you know? Make sure when you're traveling in another country, read the weights carefully. I remember the first time I was working out when I went to Taiwan, I forgot that uh, they use kilograms and not pounds. So I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just 20, 20 pounds. So I put a bunch on each side. It just keep crashing down on my chest. Be careful, be safe. And one of my worst fears ever, because usually hotel gyms are open 24 hours a day and there's usually nobody down there. This machine is not available. You get something like a free bench like this. My biggest fear is always like, if my muscles give out some, somehow, if my muscles somehow gives out and this whole thing just crashes down on my neck or something and there's no one around to help me. And that and getting eaten by a shark? Two of my worst fears. All right, I'm ready for my day of doing pretty much nothing. Here's how I usually watch TV in a hotel. You should always bring an HDMI cable, hook it up to the TV. I got these Bose speakers 100%. that I link Connect up to HD. my Mike's Galaxy S105 G to my laptop. And MSI. Let's see what I have in the snacks department. I still have some ooh, strawberry milk. Oh, pig trotters, mochi rice cake. Oh, some mochas. Movie companions. Day's gonna start, little Forrest Gump. It's about three o'clock. 
definitely lunchtime. I've been going to lunch or early dinners around 3 or 4 p.m. as often as I can because cases are kind of rising here in South Korea. So I've been just going out when the restaurants are basically completely empty. And on the days I don't really film, just explore the local area a little bit uh, and just see what's around and find something good to eat. If I can't find anything, I can always rely on the local 7-Eleven. This here is the Yoyido district. As far as I could tell, it's a lot of government buildings, a lot of offices. I think uh, maybe the financial center of Seoul. There's really not a lot of food streets around here, but there is a mall with a food court. So I'm going to go there and see what they have. I don't think a lot of people come here on the weekends. It's not even all that packed. Pretty good for uh, social distance wandering. There we go. This is the little food court situation. Oh, rotating sushi. What? There's a Panda Express here. I remember the last Panda Express experience I had wasn't great, but I am really craving Chinese food. Yeah. Chinese restaurants are, are not that common here in South Korea. Every time I go to a Chinese restaurant, they're normally some kind of skewer restaurant, which is good, but has this feeling like some kind of like a Chinese dish rice situation. Let's see what else they have here. What is this? A plate of beef and an egg? They have gyodong here. Movie theater. Rotating sushi place. Ooh, huogo. Korean hot pot. And mala tang. This is like the 1,000th on the border I've seen in South Korea. No idea on the border was so popular here. This is the food court. Let's see what they have. Fish, bibimbap, fried chicken, pizza. A lot of these places actually look really, really good here. But I feel like I, I wanna go get a gyodong. Haven't had one of those for a while. Wow, this place is so busy for like 3 p.m. Maybe everyone's using my strategy of eating at random times. Yo over rice, beef over rice. Let's do this. Definitely different than the beef bowls in Japan. The meat is, uh, it is very cooked. Onions look the same. Nice layer of nori underneath. Despite the fact that the beef is not very fatty, which to me is one of the best things about a good bowl of beef over rice is that fat dripping down to every single grain of rice. It's not like that. Meat is very lean. With that shed, flavor is fantastic. Onions are nice and crispy. Although it's lean, it's very tender. And the sauce they put on there has trickled down into the rice. And the seaweed is a nice touch. Mm, it just a smoky flavor of the meat as well. Not bad. For someone who desperately misses this dish, 100% mm, satisfies my craving. Also, kimchi is very spicy. And the rice is good. Normally in South Korea, a lot of times the rice is like the really sticky kind. Not here. Definitely not cheap. Well, kind of exactly what I needed. Very good kimchi. Mm. All right, let's go find some other stuff to eat. I keep wandering back to this Panda Express. There's a lot of people eating this. I do really miss Chinese. I'm gonna get some take home. I'll be honest. That mapa tofu looks kind of good. I think that's the compound chicken. Yep, compound chicken. That looks kind of dead, but still edible. Eggplant tofu looks good. And the mapa tofu. Now I'm kind of wondering what exactly is different about on the border here in Korea than anywhere else. It looks like the same stuff. Tacos. Egg spinach bocatilo. Chili spinach quesadilla. Well, this stuff is not cheap. A fajita is like $40. Even a quesadilla is like 25 bucks. Come try out this Korean hot pot next time. I have a good feeling about this. All the dishes I got actually looks pretty good. Reviews are coming. Did not know the second time in my life I'm trying Panda Express will be in South Korea. Everything here looks much better than what I had in the States. Mapa tofu is pretty darn authentic and delicious. Where you been?
Oh my god, that's fantastic. I can't believe I'm saying this, but at least here in South Korea, when I need my Citron food fix, I'm going to Panda Express. This tastes like something from an authentic Citron restaurant. All the flavors are here. Big chunks of pork, fermented beans, chilies, and a great numbing peppercorn flavor without actual peppercorns. I think they took out the peppercorns, but it still has that great numbing flavor. And it's so saucy. It goes perfect with the rice. Why can't Panda Express in the U.S. do? this. Oh, that mop was hopeful was good. All right, next I was eyeing this um, eggplant tofu dish. That's good too. That was good too. Well, the tofu is perfectly fried. Nice chewy texture. I mean, look, it's been sitting under that heat lamp of death for a while. So I understand it's not going to taste like it would fresh out of the wok, but the tofu is nice and chewy. Good sweet and sour flavor. Excellent level of umaminess. Eggplant delightfully sweet and savory. And there's tons of sauce in here, tons of gravy to cover the rice with. Last is a kanbao chicken. So kanbao chicken is something I really liked in the Panda Express in the United States. I'm gonna withhold judgment on the kanbao chicken. I feel like the kanbao chicken is the worst one on this plate. The kanbao chicken from Panda Express I had in the United States, it's a little sweet, a little vinegary, which is like what authentic kanbao chicken is supposed to taste like. But here, it just kind of tastes spicy. And that could be because like, when I was looking at the chicken, obviously it's been sitting there a long, long time. Flavor is still okay, but nothing really distinct about it. But I do get a hint of the numbing flavor. So I have hope that this fresh out of the wok is actually pretty amazing. I'm just kind of missing out because I got it too late. But going back to the mapa tofu, I've been looking for like a good citron restaurant here in Seoul because I've been missing some of that spicy numbing flavor covering the rice. I mean, a couple of those restaurants do exist. They're really spread out, hard to get to. Panda Express Mapa Tofu. It is about as authentic as it can get. I mean, bring this to the United States, please. I was just gonna Panda Express next time I want Citron food. Unbelievable. Shockingly good. Honestly, the rest of the dishes there <clears throat> didn't really quite look that good. Maybe the spicy beef I would've tried, but I feel like all the other stuff just didn't look really appetizing. But glad I got this. Oh, my tongue is still feeling that fiery, numbing spice. Good job on this one, Panda Express. Fantastic. Besides this, I was at 7 Eleven. Look at what Hershey's did Hershey's macaroons and Hershey's choco sandwiches. The inside is really good. The outside feels like I'm chewing on a piece of cardboard. Oh, look at that. This should really just be melting your mouth. Flavor is good, but texture wise, big no no. Choco sandwich. You guys, I need you to kind of bear witness to something. It does say choco sandwich, right? Like, I just want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. So it really doesn't say two pieces of bread. Doesn't say that, right? Two slices of, oh, that, okay, it is inside, I think. Oh, it is, it is. Oh, okay, okay, I just haven't got to it. But look how much of the bread is not touching the choco. Like, half the bread has no choco. So depending on where you're biting into, you're just biting into bread. Mm. It just kind of tastes like bread with some melted Hershey's chocolate. I was actually really excited for the Hershey things because I've never seen them before, but maybe y'all should be learning from Panda Express. And I haven't tried this since I got to Korea. Honey butter chips. Oh, oh, these are so good. Oh, how could it be this good? How? Oh, wow. I'm doing so many things to my tongue. I mean, are these fried or just fell from heaven? Oh, you gotta go try this. It tastes like regular chips, but with a touch of honey and a touch of butter. Well, obviously honey butter is exactly what the name says. It's honey butter chips. You can taste the honey, you can taste the butter on a chip and it is just divine. Well, these are the greatest potato chips. I've ever had in my life. I don't eat a lot of potato chips, but these are now the best I've ever had. Insane. If you can find you somewhere, buy them. They also have a very jolly bee on the back. <laughs> All right, gonna finish dinner and then second gym session.